What do you think you're all playing at? Squeeze, please. We are not playing. We are arguing. <laughs> you see, I'm five minutes late and you're all getting at each other's throats already. Well, sit down. Well, come on, all of you. Julie, what tell us. Sit down. Danielle, I'm surprised at you. What were you and Max arguing about? Well, it... Nothing, uh, honest. I, I just asked her to come for a Greek meal and I thought we could have a little bit of this and uh, a little bit of that. It's and... a little bit of the other that I don't like. Yeah, well, sit down. <laughs> Giovanni, what were you and Juan quarrelling over? Well, he's a make a fun of Santa Maria. Look, Santa Maria, the Virgin Mary? No, Luigi Santa Maria, the Italian footballer. <laughs> Italian footballers, animals. You shut your mouth, you big Spanish onion. Hey. <laughs> if you all spent half as much energy on learning English as you do on arguing with each other, you'd be word perfect by now. As it is, you still have a lot to learn. In just over a week, you take your examinations, and I don't think you're quite ready at all. Uh, squeeze, please. You are committing a mistake. No, I'm not. You may have mastered a few verbs, but you speak English atrociously. All we need is a little electrocution. <laughs> Elocution. Okay. You're quite right, Max. What you all need is to practice your English conversation. Now, part of your exam will consist of how well you speak English as well as know it. So, before we break for tea, I'm going to go around the class, and I want each of you to speak for one minute in turn on whatever subject I give you. All right? We'll start with you, Danielle. Your subject is the seaside. The seaside. I like to go to the beach, take all my clothes off and lie in the sun. <laughs> Tell me which beach I come and watch. <laughs> Don't interrupt Giovanni. Sit down. Go on, Donia. One weekend, I went to the Isle of the Man. At the Isle of Man? Yes. But I was very disappointed they were not all men. <laughs> so, thank you, Daniel. That'll do. Well done. Ali. Yes, please. Television. <coughs> Jelly good. Uh, <clears throat> I'm liking very much the English television. Every night I'm watching the crosswords. <laughs> crossroads. Uh, yes, please. Uh, I'm also liking all the advertisements. And I am learning lots of useful English things. Like uh, graded grains making finer flour. <laughs> And little perforations. Uh, it's very useful. Only one thing I'm not liking. What's that? Paying the money for the license. <laughs> not to worry, Ali. Thank you, well done. Jelly good. Sully, your subject, philosophy. Very good. In Democratic Republic of China, philosophy is for the proletariat where all property invested in community, each member working according to his capacity and receiving according to his wants, as opposed to Western philosophy where proletariat exploited by corrupt capitalists and imperialistic warmongers to <laughs> seek only to classes and create class hatred. Chairman Mao, he said... That is not true. True. <laughs> Jamila, a minute, please, on art. Art? Painting. Oh, huh, a chap painting. I like very much painting. Last wedding's day, I am did painting. But you painted a picture? No, no picture. I painting kitchen door. <laughs> I don't mean that sort of painting. I mean works uh, by the great masters like Leonardo da Vinci, Turner, Matisse, Van Gogh. Oh, a cha cha, huh? Now, last week ending, I am going to Tatty Gallery. Tate. <laughs> And I am not like what I see. Paintings of ladies barefoot up to here. <laughs> and showing their bosoms and all that. And also paintings of undressed gentlemen showing all yeah, I don't think we're going to the detail. <laughs> That's all right. Anna, can you speak for a minute on life after death? Yeah. I do not believe in life after death. When you are dead, that is the end. That's not true. When you die, you go to heaven. Well, us the Catholics go to heaven. <laughs> what about everybody else? Everybody else go to hell. <laughs> if heaven is full of Catholics like you, I would prefer to go to hell. <laughs> no, I don't think we'll pursue that subject for any more, if you don't mind. Thank you, Anna. Max, a minute, please, on British birds. <laughs> Birds, especially blondes. Yeah. <laughs> Quiet. That is not very funny, Max. Sorry. <clears throat> Every day in the garden of my lodging house, I have many birds: blacky birds, cocky sparrows, <laughs> and, uh, sometimes.
sometimes uh, a blue breast. <laughs> tit. A blue tit. Okay. Yesterday, I see a red robin tit. <laughs> well, that's a robin red breast. Okay, yes. Uh, the British bird's much confusing. Yeah, well... Well done. Well done. Oh, Giovanni, what should we give you to speak about? Girls. I don't think so, Giovanni. Have you any hobbies? Sure. My favourite hobby is girls. <laughs> Haven't you any other hobbies? Sure, but not as good. <laughs> I know it's difficult for you, Giovanni, but try and speak for one minute without bringing girls into your conversation. Okay. I've got two other hobbies. The first hobby is making the wine. What's the second hobby? Drinking it. <laughs> After I drink it, I do my third hobby. But you don't let me talk about that. <laughs> hey, my friend Vincenzo, his hobby is pinching. Oh, you mean he's a thief? No, not a thief. He said his hobby was pinching. What does he pinch? You don't let me talk about that either. <laughs> Thank you, Giovanni. That'll do. Thank you. Ranjit, what can you tell us about evolution? Nothing at all. <laughs> Why not? I am not knowing what it means. <laughs> well, it means the origin of the species, where we all came from. Ah, now I am understanding. Good. I came from Punjab, he came from Italy, she came from France. No, 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 you're taking me too literally. I mean, I want you to speak about how life itself began. Thousand apologies. Life begin. When man and lady make love. <laughs> yes, but before that, what happened? They put the light out? <laughs> no, 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 Darwin's theory of evolution, Ranjit, is that life was not created, but evolved from a pre-existing form. The first forms of life were in the sea, and then came creatures who got out of the sea and crawled on their legs, then became four-legged mammals, then came creatures who learned to stand on two legs, and then came the great apes. Juan, si, señor. let's hear your observations on the stars. Por favor. <laughs> ah, si, sí, stars. There's plenty stars. Yeah, what well, can you name some? Eh, uh, si. Sí. Uh, Sophia Loren, Brigitte Bardot. <laughs> Quiet. Uh, sorry, Mr. Brown. Just a joke. Just? Uh, if it isn't too much trouble, can you try being more serious for one minute? Si, si. Minute, I speak serious. For one minute. <laughs> stars. In the heaven, plenty stars. Some big stars. Some little stars. Some not so big stars. Some not so little stars. Some bright stars. Some uh, dull stars. Some not so bright stars. Some... Uh, well, thank you. Hey, I no speak for one minute. Yeah, well, I think you've spoken for long enough. Thank you. Taro. Arsa. A minute, please, on childhood. Not once, Pico, about childhood. Why not? Very bad time for a meal. No parents. Are. No parents? Santa Maria is a miracle baby. <laughs> Mother and father killed when I was a, a small boy. Childhood, very lonely. Yes, Taro, I, I know what you mean. Did you lose your parents when you were a little boy? Well, I didn't exactly lose them. I just don't know who they are. You were an orphan? Yes. That's terrible. Well, one Easter Monday, when I was about two weeks old, I was left on the steps of an orphanage in Jeremy Street. Hence my name, Jeremy. Oh, oh dearie me. I'm being very sad for you. Not having a mummy? <laughs> yeah, well, cheer up, Ali. What you never have, you never miss. Matter of fact, until I was about two, I was convinced that my mummy was a big woolly teddy bear. <laughs> Although I must say, I do often wonder sometimes whether I have any brothers or sisters. Hey, we be your brothers and sisters. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. We all become one big happy family. Yeah. Yeah. And I will be your brother. <laughs> and I will be your sister. Well, not quite sister. Whoa. Well, that's uh, very kind of you all. Uh, I think we'll break the tea now, all right? Oh, yes. Yes. Ah, <laughs> uh, good evening, Mr. Brown. Ah, uh, good evening, Miss Courtney. Headache? No, thanks. I've already got one. <laughs> you like a couple of 
of aspirin. Oh, I think I need a drink, actually. Well, strong black coffee might help. Yeah, a double scotch might help a bit more. No, I need a break. A nice, quiet ten minutes away from my students will do me the world of good. Mm -hmm. Mr. Uh, uh, what kind of tomato juice, please? I'm only wanting coffee cola, yeah. please. Oh, yeah. A barrel. A glass of milk, please. Look, I've only got one pair of hands. Hey, the beautiful hands. Uh, thank you. You're a beautiful girl. Muy bella. Uh, what did you want? Brandy. Oh, oh look, I'm right out. I'll have to go into the other bar. I won't be a minute. Hey, Sorry. what about that? Oh, oh, no way. Hey. Hey. hey, boys, look. Here is Mr. Brown. Oh. What are you all doing here? Uh -huh. Come on. It makes a change. Yes. Canteen coffee, not very good. Uh, can we be buying you a drinky, please? Uh, well, that's very kind of you, Ali, but I've got a bit of a headache, so if you don't mind, I'll just have a quiet sit down over there. Oh. Hello, Mr. Brown. Oh, hello, Sid. Yes, please. Don't you ever get drunk? <laughs> Every night, I can't face the wife sober. <laughs> you got any family, Sid? Eh? Have you got any family, any children? Oh, yes and no. What do you mean, yes and no? Well, me and Lil, we did have a nipple once, and I was out of work. Had no money, got a bit desperate, so I wrapped the baby up well, took it out, put it on the steps of the orphanage. An orphanage? Yeah, in Jeremy Street. <laughs> in Jeremy Street? <laughs> it wasn't on the Easter Monday, was it? Yes, it was. Are you sure? Afraid so. What did he say when you told him? Well, I haven't told him yet. But you must. Oh, I don't know. Some things are best left alone. I mean, after all, it was a long time ago. Nearly 30 years. The truth, Mr. Brown, must be told. Well, do you think it's wise? I mean, uh, it's a bit of a shock to realise that you're related to someone so rough and vulgar. Oh, nonsense. I'm sure Sid will soon get used to you. <laughs> Thank you. You know, come to think of it, and looking at you now, there's quite a resemblance. Oh, Sid and me? Yes, especially the profile. Like father, like son. Oh, dear. What about your mother? Yeah, what about her? According to Sid, she sounds a right old dragon. Well, I think it's very romantic. Enter. I just brought the stockroom key back. Sorry, I'm, I'm not protruding, am I? <laughs> no, Sydney, of course not. Quite the opposite. In fact, your presence here is most opportune. Oh. Mr. Brown has something to say to you, haven't you, Mr. Brown? Um, yes. Well, uh, I'll leave you two alone. <laughs> what do you want to say, son? Son? <laughs> you just called me son. But well, don't get your knickers in a twist. I call everybody son, except the birds. Oh. In any case, I'm old enough to be your father. <laughs> Look, um, sit down, Sid. <laughs> Cigarette, Sid. No, I'm sorry, I've just run right out. <laughs> no, 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 I'm offering you one. Oh, that's very kind of you. Thanks very much. So. <laughs> Listen, Sid, uh, you see, what I wanted to ask you is, uh, yeah? Well, well, you see, how are you keeping? That's a gamble. <laughs> oh, good, good, good. Listen, what is it you want to say to me? Ah, oh, yes, well, you see, it, uh, it could be a bit embarrassing. It's not about the Cape of Good Hope, is it? Cape of Good Hope? The soap that we use uh, for the wash basins. So, I only did it once, yeah. <laughs> it was near Christmas and I was a bit short, you see. And I only flogged about half a dozen. <laughs> what, you sold six bars of soap? Cases. <laughs> I've got a pal of mine in the market, he sells anything. Yeah, I, I wish you hadn't told me about that. It wasn't about the soap. No, I never even heard of it. It was about the crockery. What? <laughs> crockery in the canteen. You haven't been stealing crockery, have you? I only took about a dozen of each, and some of them were all chipped. You were telling me next you've been nicking the chairs. Do what? Nicking the chairs. No, I'd never nick any chairs. Well, that's a relief. Can't get them in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> I 
wonder if it's hereditary. Pardon? Never mind. Uh, look, Sid, um, tell me about your wife, Sid. What's she like? Pain in the neck. <laughs> oh, but you must have been fond of her work. Nah, she's always nagging. Nag, nag, nag. Well, perhaps she feels neglected. She deserves to be neglected. <laughs> I'd divorce her if it wasn't the one thing. What's that? We're not married. <laughs> No, we thought about it, but we never got round to it. Well, that's terrible. Well, it doesn't worry us. Yeah, but that means I'm a, the, 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 your, your, your child is... is, is All right, Lord. Oh, but don't say it, Sid. <laughs> Sid, you must get married. I mean, if only for my... For, for your child's sake. I mean, to give it a name. Oh, it's too late in the day now for that. In any case, we can't afford it. I mean, she'd want a new outfit and a proper do. Nah, it'd only be a waste of money. Look, Sid, I'll pay. Do what? I'll pay for the wedding. Why? What for? Well, I want to. Can I have a new whistle and flute? Yeah. What, and a car and flowers? Yes. And a booze up afterwards? Oh, naturally. God, blimey! I know it sounds strange, but I have got my reasons. Look, can you and your wife meet me in the Red Lion pub after school tonight? Yeah, that'd be all right. Right, well, we'll see you there, then. Yeah. Yeah? All right. See you later, son. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> My own father, a thief. Still, I suppose I should be grateful in a way. If he hadn't left me on those orphanage steps, if he'd brought me up himself, well, what would I be like today? <laughs> Get out of there, you nanny goat. Oh, thanks, son. Yeah, you better shove that in your sky rocket as well. Oh, yeah. What's this? It must be 50 quid here. Yeah? 53. Where'd you get it from? Oh, I bumped your new geezer outside, didn't I? I fell out of his pocket. Oh, a chip off the old block, eh? Ha ha ha. gonna have a nice job afterwards. No, I'm eating a few of the lads. Thought we might go and bash up a few Spurs supporters, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, go down a disco, pick up some crumpet, and uh, Oh! <laughs> Now <laughs> enjoy yourself, eh? Yeah, what else? Good help, son. Right on. Here you go. Cheers. <laughs> Mr. Brown? Mr. Brown? Yeah, darling, what do you want? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Miss Courtney, I, I was miles away. Well? Did you tell him? Yeah, well, I don't think I really ought to, actually. But of course you must tell him, Mr. Brown. There's no other alternative. Well, there is. What's that? Well, I could shoot myself. <laughs> what do you do tonight? Why are you asking? Well, there's a dance at the students' club. You want to come? Hey, I was going to ask Daniel to come with me. Ah, too bad. I ask her first. What do you say? Well, I like very much to dance. Good. But... I show you how to do the Italian shuffle. You stand there like this. Then you put your arms around my neck. I put my arms around your waist. Then we put our cheeks together. What do we do next? Who cares? Oh! Well, I do hope I'm not interrupting anything. I was just showing Daniel how to dance the Italian shuffle. Yeah, well, kindly shuffle back to your seats. <laughs> right, now, part of your examination next week will consist of reading aloud. That is to say, all of it. So I thought tonight we'd have a practice by reading out a poem. Ah, jolly good. I'm hearing a jolly good poem last night. Uh, there was a young lady called Nelly who was tattooed all over in Delhi. <laughs> right down her back was the Union Jack and God saved the Queen on her belly. <laughs> Thank you, Sir John Bretton. Right, now the poem we're going to read is called The Daffodils by William Wordsworth, all right? I'm going to ask each of you to read out a line in turn. We'll start with you again, Daniel. I wandered lonely as a cloud. Cloud. Sorry. Ali. Uh, <clears throat> that floats on high o'er valleys and hillies. <laughs> Vales and hills. Jolly good. <laughs> Suli. When all at once I saw a cloud. Crowd. <laughs> Jamila. A host of golden daffodils. <laughs> daffodils. Anna. Besides a lake, beneath the trees. Uh, the, the, the. The, the, the. <laughs> Max. 
fluttering and dancing in the breeze. Well done. Giovanni. Continuous as the stars that shine. Continuous as the stars that shine. Continuous as the stars that shine. Better. Ranjit. And tinkle on the Milky Way. Twinkle. <laughs> Thousand apologies. Anybody know what the Milky Way is? Si, sí, senor. Chocolate. <laughs> No one, the Milky Way is a luminous collection of stars. Si, si. <laughs> Sophia Loren. <laughs> no, no, no. Huh? Oh, uh, go on, it's your turn. Sorry, right, sorry. Right. Uh, they stretch in never ending line. Good. Taro? A rungle. The margin of the bale. Well done. I'm sure Mr. Wordsworth would have found that quite an uplifting experience. <laughs> Mr. Brown, I've just had a telephone call from your... F from Sydney. He asked me to tell you that when you've finished, he'll be waiting for you in the bar of the Red Lion with your... M with his wife. Oh, hello, Sid. Hello, Mr. Brown. Where's your wife? Oh, she's gone to the watch it. She won't be in, won't be in a minute. Oh, I see you got the drinks in then. Yeah, I told Magnus you'd pay for them when you came in. Oh, okay. <laughs> Here, Sid! <laughs> Where's that teacher then? Meet the wife. Don't laugh. <laughs> Pleased to meet you, Mrs. Um... You may call me Ma. Oh, uh, Ma. <laughs> yeah. Is it true what Sid says, that you're going to pay for our wedding? Uh, yes, Mum. <gasps> oh, we're ever so grateful, ain't we, Sid? Yeah, we are. But, but what I don't understand... Yeah, well, I'll try and explain. You see, remember what you told me about leaving your little baby at that orphanage in Jeremy Street? Yeah? Yeah, well, one of the reasons why I want you to, uh, to get married is so that your child will be legitimate. Ah, oh, what a lovely thought! Oh, I must give you a kiss! <laughs> yeah, well, I'm going to tell you something now. It was 30 years ago that you left that baby at that orphanage in Jeremy Street? Yeah, it was about that time, yeah. On an Easter Monday? Yeah. Yeah, well, I was left at an orphanage 30 years ago in Jeremy Street on an Easter Monday. Gee, that Sid! What a coincidence! <laughs> I told you I was that baby. Would you say that was a coincidence? Yeah, blooming miracle. Why? Because our baby was a girl. <laughs> <laughs>